We're with Eastern Connecticut baseball captain Mike Vaccarelli, the team just getting back from from Florida where it was 5-2 and two under first-year head coach Matt LeBranch. Mike, in general, how'd the trip go? You know, the trip went really well. Um, got a lot of work in, got to, got to see what we, we can do this year. Got a lot of young guys who got a lot of work, a lot of young pitchers. Um, a lot of guys got a lot of at-bats that needed to get at-bats. Um, our DH spot is still open, so we're looking for for someone to step up. A lot of people feel that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, looking for somebody to just hop in there and get be the right guy for the role. But it was all overall a good trip. Good to come back with on the right foot. Five and two is not bad for first couple of games. So we'll see where it takes us. When you guys went down there, uh, was it sort of like every spot is wide open in terms of the coach? Um, what, as to what the coach said to you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when he came in here, he, he pretty much flat out told us, um, you know, I don't know any of you. You guys have no no past history with me. It's kind of just the best nine players are going to be out there, and that's what it's going to be, And which is kind of nice for us because we know that the best nine are going to be out there at all times. Um, every spot was open more or less, so it was kind of just you have a month to show me what you got, and, and you better prove yourself if you want to be on the field. In terms of on the field stuff when you were in Florida, was it basically the way the team played, the philosophy of the game, was it basically the same as it was with Coach Alawadi, or is there an accent on different aspects of the game now? Um, like in terms of base running or anything like I that? I mean, in terms, of, in terms of base running, we have a little bit more ability to just do our own thing. Um, we have a lot of guys that can run if they want to run. They have green light at all times. Um, very rarely will he put on the red light with no running. Um, if we want to bunt, you bunt. Um, there's kind of, there's, I mean, it's much less structured. It's more of less, I'm trusting you guys to go out there and do your thing. Um, go out there and, and just play ball. And if, if you need my assistance, I'll, I'll be there to assist you. If I, if I want something done, I'll let you know. If I think you should do something, I'll let you know. Um, but a lot of it is kind of just go out and play, and, and I'll be here to support you and, and help you out if you need it. No, it seemed like some spots, uh, you, Brendan Lynch, the shortstop, uh, Joe Perez, it seemed like some spots were pretty solid in terms of generally where you batted in the order and what positions you played. But there were some other spots where there was some uh, tinkering going on? Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, the DH is a big spot. Uh, a lot of young guys got a lot of chances to get in there. Um, Corey Keene stepped up at second base. Gavin LaValle, who's been putting work in the last three years, Got a shot at first base, and he's holding holding that down out there. Um, our outfield is kind of right field, left field. There's still a couple of guys swapping in and out. Injuries are plaguing us a little bit right now. Um, so looking for a couple of guys to step up and really hold down those positions. But um, we have catcher Tim Budd who came in and was doing a great job. Um, everything is starting to settle down, settle into place right now, and hopefully everybody gets healthy and we'll, we'll be okay. Well, talking about Tim Budd, you know, people say the strength of a team is up the middle, but I mean, Tim Budd's solid behind the plate. He's the transfer yes. from Western New England. And then you've got Joe Perez in center, and then you've got you and Brendan Lynch at short and at second base or at third base. But that's pretty much the strength of this team, yeah. and that's what you sort of want, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, it's nice to have me, if I'm at second, even if Corey's at second, I mean, he's very much a leader as well. Um, and if he's not being well, I'm, at, I'm right there at third, so. Um, but it's nice to have me and Brendan up the middle, you know, kind of controlling everything. Joe Perez has earned a lot of respect in the outfield. Um, he's a great center fielder. And Tim Budd, he's only been here for a short time, but he holds his own behind the plate. So he came in and made it, made a big, big noise. He's good. Well, it looks like teams did not try and test his arm. and They only stole, they averaged about one stolen base yeah. a game, which isn't much. Yeah. Um, during infield, outfield, he shows it off a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, now the question mark on this team sort of was the pitching. We lost, yeah. you know, with with Tom Darby and Evan Chamberlain and Matt Purnell, the pitcher of the year in New England. So, is that going to be a process for that area of the team to develop? Um, we were expecting it to be a process. We had no kind of. I think we just had Greg Porter was the only returning starter, as from the last two years, and he stepped up and did a great job down there. Um, he's going to be our <clears throat> number one guy this this weekend, I think, and. and coming up in the next couple of games. Um, Chuck Volt with the switch from closer to starter is going to be a big big transition, but he's doing a great job. Um, a lot of young guys, Pat O'Neill, who hasn't had many innings, sophomore, um, 
went down to Florida and did a great job. He's, he's been impressing everybody. Uh, Pat Barnett, and then we have Pat Barnett, Brent Polella, Adam Merritt. We have a lot of guys in the pen that just can really go out there and shove if needed. It seemed like with some of the guys pitching in uh, position players that some guys that didn't really get too, too much of a chance the last couple of years yeah. have responded. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, I've luckily been playing over the last couple of years, so I, I don't really know. But um, I'm sure it had something along the lines of they don't want to be in that position anymore and they, they put the mm -hmm. word work in over the offseason, um, if, I, if I had to imagine, yeah. Well, you've been the starter at third base for two years, and then how did it come to the fact that you would move to second base? Was it strictly because of the injury? Um, yeah, well, I came here as a second baseman or originally, okay. um, and that spot was always, has always been filled. So then my sophomore year, I moved to right field, and then third base, third base, last two years. Um, and then Corey being hurt and Coach LeBranch knowing that I've had a lot of background in second base put me over there, and things just happened to, to work out well. What's the major difference? I think at third base you pretty much just do what it takes to knock the ball down. Third base is uh, protect your teeth mm -hmm. first and foremost. Mm -hmm. um, Duck. Yeah, and then uh, you have a lot of time to get the guy out just because yeah. balls are hit so hard. Um, but then again, second base you have a lot of time to react to ground balls. You have it's a, it's a lot more. I like second base better just because you have a lot more. You're in, you're in control a lot more of the game. You're, always, you're in every play. You're, you're always going off for relays or turning to plays. or You're always a part of it. That's why a lot of second basemen end up being managers in the big leagues because yeah. they, they control the whole yeah. field for the most part. Yeah. Did you guys turn in double plays between you and Brendan? I think, I think I only played for three games. I think we had six. Like 4-6-3 or 6-4-3? Three, 6-4-3. Six, four, three. Six, four, three, really? Every time, yeah. yeah, I think we had six. So you got it back pretty quick? You got it back pretty Did quick. you? Yeah. You had no choice. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, the games you guys won, we said you got a great win against William Patterson. Is yeah. that a nice thing to end the trip on and, and get ready for the? Yeah, it was. It was nice to see everything kind of come together right there at the end. Um, Brent Palolo started, and I think he had four hits, and all of them were infield singles. Yeah. Um, he went out there and, and pitched his butt off, which was good to see, um, because we're going to need him in the long run. Um, it was good to see her hitting. I think we ended up winning 8 nothing. It was good to see her hitting, fielding, base running, everything kind of just come together right before we made the trip back here where we start up and start playing games every other day, every day. Because um, we really need to start getting the, the team that's in sync the most kind of gets in a pattern will we'll be successful in the end. So it's good to come back on, a, on the right foot and come right back and get back to work. Just talk quickly about co the, the, the change. You're with Coach LeBranch now. You're with Coach Alawati for three years. Um, are, talk about the difference in, in the atmosphere in terms of, is Coach LeBranch a very low-key person but very intense? That's the feeling I would get with him. Yeah. Um, outside of the gym, outside of the practice field, he's very, very quiet, kind of doors always closed, doesn't really talk to anybody, doesn't really want to know the parents, doesn't get to know the parents. Um, on the field, he's, he's your best friend. He wants to do everything to help you. He, he's very intense, very much, I'm going to ask this of you, and you're going to do it, and if you don't do it, I'm going to find someone who will, um, which is good. It makes everybody work hard. Um, he, but he's very much intense, very much, very demanding, which is good. It's pretty matter-of-fact, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, very. Just go about your business yeah. and do your job. Yeah. Uh, last question, Mike. You know, Eastern's been the most, one of the most dominant teams in the nation for the last 40 years or so, but they've missed the postseason for the last two years. It seems sort of odd to be saying this, but would a goal of this year's team to be back in the NCAA tournament? Um, I think, <clears throat> I think the, the overall goal is obviously to win a World Series, but the to start over and to start new, I think, is kind of just be be playing our best ball by the end of the year. Come, come, come May, we want to be playing our best, going to tournament time, playing our best ball. If we don't get in with a bid, we have to have to take it by the LEC tournament, which is fine. It's just going to be, by the end of the year, we want to be playing our best so that we can just keep going, keep rolling through. So Eastern will be opening up, hopefully at home, they'll be opening their Little East Conference season this weekend. Uh, they'll be hosting the University of Massachusetts in Boston. Mike, thank you. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much.